Hey there, this is Jason. Today I want to take you through the inside and walk around the outside of this building behind me, which is both my chicken coop and my garden shed. When we built this in 2021, we built it to meet our needs exactly. And there's a lot of custom features in here that I'm really proud of. There are also some things that if I had a chance, I would do over again. So let's go take a walk and chat about that. In order to understand how we got here, I have to first back up a little bit and share uh, what we were walking into when we bought this house. Uh, there were chickens here when we arrived. They were passed down from the prior owner and there was a six by eight chicken coop made out of a metal frame and a plywood exterior that sat right here in this open space. Made out of plywood, the plywood was rotting, the coop itself was only about four feet tall, so that was just tall enough to crouch down in, but really difficult to get in and clean, and um, the coop had to be replaced. Next to it, over here, in uh, what an area was, that was just covered by these pepper trees that are up top here, there were a variety of plastic sheds for hay and tools and who knows what else. Uh, it was really cluttered, and I love coming down here to my garden to relax and calm down. And one of the ways that I can do that is by having some amount of organization. So I knew that the multiple structures had to go. Also, my property is about the length of a football field. This is one corner of the property and then my garage where all my tools are, are all the way in the opposite corner. So when I came down to garden, I had to make sure I either had all of my materials with me or I was walking back and forth over and over again. And so I knew that I had to build a structure down here for my tools. I also knew that I had to build a structure for my chicken coop. There weren't a whole lot of people doing what I was proposing. So I feel like I have something new here to share. Um, and again, this doesn't fit everybody. This is not a solution for everyone. I have a larger piece of property. It's just a shade under one acre. Again, it's about a football field in length. It has that dimension. Uh, not everyone needs a massive shed like this, um, but if you do, I have some things here that will hopefully help you in considering your build. So, so here are some shed specifics for you. The dimensions of this shed are 20 feet long by 10 feet wide. The broad side of the shed face the east and west direction. So I get a lot of morning sun over here on these three windows. Fortunately, the afternoon uh, sun is shaded by my neighbor's pepper trees. Um, and it's sitting on a gravel base. The gravel base is approximately 24 by 12 or 24 by 13, somewhere in that area. Uh, and it's three quarter inch gravel or crushed stone that I had trucked in. Uh, the shed itself is sitting on three massive skids and then it's a plywood base and it's framed uh, off of those skids. A separate project that was being worked on as the shed was being built and planned out was these two-step retaining walls behind me. Uh, you'll notice here that my yard slopes, so where I'm standing uh, at about chest height is the height of my yard, which I have some uh, natives on that top level. And then here on the bottom level, I have uh, four Asian pear trees. And I specifically chose those Asian pears because I want them to grow up and get tall and provide some shade for my chicken coop. I also built this trellis that is sort of cantilevered over. I secured it to the studs inside the shed and I have passion fruit growing on it. So this is year number one and the passion fruit has uh, grown up out of the ground, up about eight feet, and it has grown over to the midway mark, which is my middle window. And uh, by next year, I suspect that the passion fruit will reach the end all the way up here. Uh, and that too will provide a little canopy from that midday sun. My property is relatively flat, but there was a slope right here. And we built a retaining wall to kind of flatten out some of our kids' space. We also built a two-tiered retaining wall over here, which is now a native garden and my Asian pears. But we left the middle part open and we left it sloped exactly the way it was. So you can kind of get a sense maybe in this video of how sloped the yard was. It was sloped just enough to be annoying, but it, it wasn't uh, something that um, we couldn't work with, right? So this is now our, our sloped ramp down to the shed. And um, I had to build a platform out here to, to make it easier to get in and out of the shed because the 
the front part here is closer to the ground that back part is uh, is about a foot off the ground and I used some dirt from some of my excavations to level it all out this is my junkyard future potting bench out here so ignore the clutter and then over here um, I put two doors on the front and I thought this would be a great idea the doors take up approximately seven and a half feet of the 10 foot width. I thought this would be a great idea because I'd have one active door that I use all the time. And then the second door I would open and I have a shelving unit behind so I can get the both sides of the shelves from inside. And then when the doors open the back side of the shelves. In reality though, if I could do this over again, this was mistake number one. By making the door so wide, the header or the top of the door had to come down because it had to fit underneath the uh, joists of the roof. Um, I would have gained a little bit of extra clearance had I had one door in the center. I would have been able to raise it up a little bit. Right, so, so inside the shed, I've got tons of space. And um, as soon as you walk in here on the right, I've got all my tools organized, hung up on the wall. I do have electric in the shed. So this is one of my sprinkler controllers right here. I think that's a 16 zone and I'm using, I think 10 or 11 of those zones and I'll, I'll max that out real soon. So I have that plugged in, I have my light switch. I do have lights in here. Um, up in the ceiling. I have some things stored up in the ceiling. On the opposite side here, I have that shelving unit that I was telling you about that is accessible on both sides. When I open that second door, I can get to the back side, which is just, I don't use it every day, but it's convenient. And then I have a, a metal shelving unit and I built a plywood workbench on here. So this is sort of a, a clutter area. <laughs> when I'm not videotaping, it gets a little messy. But I got a pegboard in the back for some of my more common tools that I use so I don't have to go constantly back and forth to the garage. But obviously the reason why we're here is because a third of this structure is dedicated to my chicken coop. So yes, that is a hardwood floor material and that's because we just had some extra boxes lying around and I wanted to get rid of them and they were just a tripping hazard. Um, so they became part of the wall. So I framed out uh, about seven feet of this shed and I dedicated it to the chicken coop. So once that was framed, I built um, the hardwood floor, that's the that's the wall facing me, and then I have some plywood on the inside that creates a, a bathtub about four feet off the ground. I'll show you what the inside looks like in just a moment. But here are some features on the outside. So my big thing with this chicken coop was uh, I want to be able to access and do as much as I possibly can from the outside. I don't want to constantly have to walk into the bedding where the chicken poop is and put on chicken shoes and so on. So over here in this corner, I have three um, drainage pipes. These are three inch drainage pipes. Really common to have these. Uh, this is sort of a trendy thing that you can do, but I, I moved the food inside because having the food sitting outside was attracting a lot of critters. We had some palm trees next door and there were a lot of rats that lived up there. So they loved eating all our food in the middle of the night. So I put the food inside. So these caps, they open up and these tubes are on a 45 degree angle. So when I fill this up, it goes through the wall and into the chicken coop. And if you look through my window, you can see those three pipes down there uh, where the chickens can access their food. So all I have to do when I go to feed my chickens, open up those caps. I have the food underneath here in this large bin. Uh, I scoop it out. I feed it through the tubes. I turn the tubes so it doesn't go sliding out the other end. And uh, I can fill these three up. And currently with my five chickens, um, this will last me several weeks. So I could go away for a weekend and not have to worry about feeding the chickens. Second thing I did was build my nest box facing into my garden shed. Um, this is a box that is occupying airspace inside my garden shed. That was important because um, I wanted some shelf units. So this, the top of the nest box is where I put my trays, where I gather my eggs and other loose items. Also, any flat surface inside a chicken coop, the chickens will find their way on top of it and they'll poop all over it. So it'll be a mess. So I didn't want to give them that. I wanted to give them the roosting bars and that was it. I didn't want to have to clean any additional flat surfaces. So I made sure that the bump out was uh, in my direction. And again, because this is all under roof, none of this matters as far as like rainfall is concerned or it getting dirty or exposed to the elements or safety mechanism, make sure the, the doors are closed. And then I have um, six nest boxes and we all know if you've got chickens, they'll use one or two and the rest will go empty. But I built this nest box to fit these plastic trays that I have, and they're all currently in the um, nest box, but you can see underneath there's white, and there's a lip around the edge. Um, these are large trays. I think they're, they're about 16 by 14. Um, they're large enough. They're larger than the recommended size. If you go online and figure out what, what an average chicken needs for its nesting box needs, uh, this is larger than that, but these trays, allow me to 
put down cedar bedding and in the event that an egg gets cracked or um, you know there's a mess in here for some reason instead of trying to scrape all of that mess off of the wood I can just simply lift the tray up wash it off clean it off bring it on back throw some more bedding on top and I'm good to go so having some sort of liner or uh, something that covers my nest box floors was really really important these trays uh, are a lifesaver they just make it so much easier to manage um, the coop itself there's an access door from the inside and I put a plexiglass window in just because you know I want to be able to peek in and not necessarily disrupt the chickens and open the door and uh, mess with them at night when they're sleeping so I'm able to peek inside here and see what's going on without having to open the door but when I do open the door it swings towards me again that was uh, important because I rely on the deep litter method and um, my threshold is I think eight or ten inches off the ground and I did that on purpose I did not want all of the nesting material spilling out into my shed when I opened the door I also did not want the door to get stuck with bedding that was up and over the threshold so having it open outwards towards the garden shed means that I can open it even if there's an obstruction in front of the door uh, not likely to happen but I was just trying to think ahead to all all possible scenarios uh, the bedding itself this is just regular I think it's cedar bedding and again I use that deep litter method so there's um, in some spots upwards of six to ten inches worth of bedding and uh, this has not been cleaned yet uh, fully I have not gone down to the surface I, I typically go in and under the roosting bars I'll scoop out the fresh chicken poop which I haven't done in a little while I'll add that to my compost bin and then as the bedding gets a little thin I'll add new stuff on top so I'm constantly adding new stuff I'm constantly scooping out particularly right here where they roost um, taking out the the, the poop and uh, adding it to my compost pile as far as the bars are concerned these are two by fours turned sideways that's my preferred method rather than turning it uh, the narrow way I have them the flat way and uh, I have enough space in here for maybe 12 or 15 chickens I think I've had 12 in here total 12 or 14 um, I'm down to five uh, currently um, but I do have some ramps built there so they don't get too close to the edge particularly here I didn't want them going over the food and pooping in it so I built that that 45 degree bar just screwed that in so that um, uh, right here this would be the furthest they go I can close these windows up if it's cold out or if it's rainy uh, but for the most part they stay open again over here I did a similar idea with the 45 degree I didn't want them getting too close to the edge and then around the bottom again I told you I, uh, earlier I built this bathtub oh man this, <laughs> this is looking pretty dirty on the camera I built this bathtub uh, out of plywood and uh, the whole point there was if I had just left the two by fours exposed and the studs were there it just create a lot of nooks for dirt and, and junk to get uh, collected in so I wanted to make it as smooth and um, as easy to clean when I do eventually clean it as possible and so I, I didn't need plywood to go all the way up to the ceiling that was unnecessary so I just went up I think that's about three or four feet right there as far as the chicken door is concerned we're gonna go swing around to the other side where I can show you what that looks like so went because of the change in elevation the back of my um, chicken coop is a little higher off the ground than the entrance and uh, I just built some ramps these are kind of temporary they're they're not intended to last forever they're not pressure treated but they're, they're gonna last long enough to help get my chickens up and down um, I put some shims there screwed those down to give them some traction on the wood just in case they were sliding a bit um, and then the chicken door that I love here is this one called run chicken uh, prior I had a chicken door that used strings and pulleys and it was constantly breaking down it was so frustrating it was so unreliable this guy right here no strings but there's a motor in this black part and you'll notice that there's these little slats in the door and there's a gear on the inside that turns that opens and closes the door so it's a relatively simple mechanism and I love the way you program this thing it's so cool you go on the run chicken website you program all your parameters into the website and then the website screen uh, in this case you would do this on your phone because you need to be able to bring your phone over you um, you go into a settings mode and then the website flashes a color combination and then the um, device in here recognizes those flashes uh, and programs this device based on the parameters that you put into the website so this thing has been a set it and forget it I, I love this I would recommend it hundred percent so um, this door opens up I think it's set to a specific time 
And that's because uh, at dawn, we have some coyotes that like to roam and jump over fences. So um, I actually have the door open a little bit later in the day than uh, right at dawn because we still have some coyote activity. Uh, as far as what the shed looks like here in the back, pretty straightforward, right? I do have to get up on the roof and uh, blow off some of the, the peppercorns and the leaves from the trees, but that's just regular maintenance here. But the shed itself, uh, a little close to the property line. Uh, that's one of the things that I had to uh, talk with my neighbors about, and they're pretty cool. They've got some uh, trees and shrubs. They can't even see the coop. So they um, were already aware that there was a chicken coop built right on the property line only a few feet away when i talked to them and told them my plans i said hey this is what we want to build uh i sent some eggs their way and some fruit their way and they were happy so uh you might be looking at this and going hey how are you getting away with such a large shed how are you getting away with building it on the property line um i'm not getting away with it i'm just uh, asking for forgiveness later if that ever does come up, but so far so good. Having this shed be nestled in the corner here helps. It doesn't really stand out and attract a whole lot of attention. Um, now, some of the other things to consider here is smell. So if you're combining a usable space, in this case a garden shed, right next to your chicken coop, um, don't you have that nitrogen smell whenever the chickens poop? And yeah, you do, but that's actually a great indicator to me that I need to get in there and I need to clean it out. If I can smell the chicken coop, that means that um, I have some work to do in here and I need to go ahead and, and clean up some of the some of the droppings. So it's actually a great reminder rather than a deterrent, rather than something that I think of as a negative, uh, it's just a reminder for me. So, you know, the, the more accessible something is, the easier it is to get to something, the more likely you are to maintain it. If I'm constantly coming down here to my garden shed and working in and out of this space and I'm like, man, it stinks in here, I am more likely to clean out the coop and keep it in uh, you know in an optimal condition so I see that as a benefit uh, what else we have um, the the builder so this was actually custom built by a company they came out here in one day two guys came out here they pulled a truck up into my backyard they unloaded all the lumber uh, 20 foot two by sixes and and two by eights to build the roof and um, they had it built in a day and they were here early in the morning they came to me with some questions about what I wanted done based on the lay of the land and we were able to work those out in the moment. This was not a prefabricated shed. This wasn't something that um, was off the shelf. It was built two by four by two by four. And um, you know, I paid a little bit for that, but at the end I, I got something I think is gonna last us for a very, very long time. So again, this is my garden shed, chicken coop combo. Uh, I really hope that this video is helpful. If you have something similar that you've done in the past, I'd love to hear about it. If you have some suggestions or some uh, questions about how I put this together, I'm happy to help answer those in the comment section. Go ahead and send me some feedback about what you think.